Hi, I'm Chris Frame and welcome back to my channel. If you had a view of major cruise ports, you would notice a steady flow of cruise ships entering and exiting the port. With such a high degree of activity, you could be forgiven for thinking that cruising was unaffected by coronavirus. But these cruise ship movements are a symptom of the impact of COVID-19 on the global cruise industry, as many ships are forced to return to their home ports, having had their cruise itineraries cancelled. Throughout April and May, while the world is in lockdown, cruise ships continue to sail in and out of major ports, such as Southampton, Miami and Fort Lauderdale. This activity is to facilitate the exchange of water, with treated grey water being discharged only when outside government mandated boundaries and new water is taken on board for desalination. Make no mistake, the impact of coronavirus has been devastating for cruising. In the months since the pandemic was declared, international and domestic cruises have ground to a halt, and they are not expected to recommence anytime soon. The world's fleet of close to 300 cruise ships have been devoid of passengers for weeks now, putting immense pressure on cruise lines and cruise ships as well as their crews. But while the impact of COVID-19 on cruise ships has been well documented, the effect that this shutdown is having on port cities has received less attention. That changed this week when news broke that Southampton-based Carnival UK may be forced to lay off hundreds of staff, which will undoubtedly cause a ripple effect within the city. To look at how COVID-19 is impacting port cities around the world, we can use Southampton as an example. It is Britain's largest and leading cruise port, and it also enjoys a long history as a major shipping port that dates back centuries, so Southampton has faced many crises before. To investigate this further, I spoke with Andy Skinner, a Southampton-based historian and learning officer at the Sea City Museum in Southampton. Andy has an intimate knowledge of Southampton and its history as a leading cruise port. Throughout the 20th century, Southampton was home to many of the large shipping lines, with White Star Line, Cunard Line, P&O and the Orient Line all having services that departed from the city. This maritime link has endured, surviving difficult years in the 1960s and 1970s when jet travel threatened the future of ocean voyages. Southampton emerged in the 1990s and 2000s as a leading cruise port for British cruising. Today it remains deeply linked with cruising, and Southampton is the home of Carnival UK, the owner of Cunard and P&O Cruises, which are based in a purpose-built headquarters that dominates the West Quay area. In the days of empire, it was called Gateway to the Empire, and now it's it's Gateway to the World. And you're right, sort of everything, um, everything is is geared to um, look towards that industry. If you if you went down the high street, uh, you'll find modern links to cruising, the carnival headquarters, as you mentioned, um, European offices are here in Southampton, and um, but then you also find historic buildings that link to it so an old an old post office or a, an old grocer which uh, put the fruit and vegetables on titanic for example so it's a sort of a historic thread line that runs through the, the sort of dna the blood almost of the town um, and it will carry on uh, whatever happens at the moment um, people are really adaptable people are really flexible and i think we'll surprise ourselves with with what we can we can do in the future to be honest like many cruise ports, Southampton supports a number of other industries, such as energy, cargo and vehicle shipping. But cruising forms a major part of the economy. As such, the impact of the COVID-19 shutdown is hard felt in the city. With no cruise passengers, many people's livelihoods have been affected. Those in the hospitality and tourism sectors, including hotels, restaurants, taxis, railways and retail, are being heavily impacted. Yet despite the shutdown, it's not all doom and gloom. Southampton remains a hive of activity as cruise ships come and go from the port, allowing for some sense of normality and employment for those who are critical to the maintenance, storing and fueling of cruise ships. This is similar in other cruise ports around the world. So we, uh, we had, you know, seven, eight ships coming in back to Southampton. So on the one hand, uh, yes, you, you can tell, but it's... A, it's probably wider than just Southampton. You just at the moment we're just accepting everything stops, and and maybe not reflecting on the local impact so much because it's it's national, it's, it's global, isn't it? Southampton is the home port for Cunard and P&O cruises. With their ships frequently visiting Southampton throughout the lockdown, 
the crew on board these ships have come together in support of their city and to help acknowledge the efforts of healthcare workers and the NHS. Here in the UK, every Thursday, we've been doing something called uh, Clap for Carers or Clap for the NHS. So we go out and we bang our pots and pans, we clap and we, we kind of celebrate what what our health service is doing and all the key workers sort of keeping us going. But here in Southampton, uh, a few weeks ago, the Britannia, they rigged up some lights, uh, mm. We Love NHS. And that's really special. And if you went down to uh, down to the docks, or even if you were in one of the suburbs close to the docks, because you can still hear them, at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., which is when we do it, uh, the, the horns from the ships ring out. While COVID-19 is causing unprecedented global disruption, Southampton is no stranger to tragedy or disaster. In April of 1912, the ill-fated Titanic departed Southampton bound from New York. When the giant liner sank, hundreds of people from Southampton lost loved ones, leaving a city in mourning. To give a context, 549 people who gave a Southampton address died on the Titanic part of the crew. Uh, that was huge, huge numbers. But what you also find are incredible endeavours to try and support the people that had been affected. For example, the Titanic Relief Fund, which was a it was global. That was a global fund to try and support orphans and uh, family members who'd lost loved ones and lost livelihoods. Uh, and and so you see all these little things and Southampton is at the heart of it to try and support these people. Um, and, and so Southampton um, did continue and and continues today as a sort of a major port. During World War II, Southampton was a prime target for the Luftwaffe during the dark days of the Blitz. The citizens of Southampton endured many difficult days during the war, but again, the people of the city came together in support of each other and rebuilt, enabling Southampton to support the war effort, and when normal life resumed, it endured as a leading shipping port. Seventh worst uh, town in in England to, to be blitzed. Docks a major target. Lots of the distinctive buildings were were destroyed. So you come to our town today and you might not think it's very pretty. Beforehand, it was really lovely. Um, but even even sort of the days after um, the, the, the bombings happened, uh, people picked themselves up and they kind of started rebuilding. And, and there were all sorts of kind of um, examples of people helping one another and just um, kind of normal life in some way continuing. And an example is there's a this bombing raid and a guy, he's trying to make it home, but he realises he needs to go into one of the air, public air raid shelters near the high street. And he goes into the air raid shelter and there's a woman there and she's got a tea urn. And she offers offers him tea and says, you know, do you want some tea? And that, that's a little record we've got in our archives. And that's you know, normal life somehow, some aspect of normal life that continues. 2020 will be remembered as a difficult year for many of us. From a cruising perspective, the impact is unprecedented, leaving a heavy toll on the cruise ports, not only Southampton, but others around the world. Yet by looking at Southampton's history, it's clear that even after the hardest of times, such as the devastating impacts of World War II, people can come together and rebuild there is a future for cruising and the cities that support it. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. If you're interested in other maritime history, check out my maritime history playlist. Or if you're interested in finding out more about the latest cruise news, check out my cruise news playlist. Thanks again for watching and until we are able to cruise again, I hope to see you on board. Thank you.